Hello, welcome to this video introducing the concept of curvature. In the previous video, we made it to this slide where we just gave the definition of curvature. It is based off of having the arc length parameter being involved, S. And so we um, will now go and calculate from definition the curvature of one of these uh, circular helix uh, curves. So we have to take the unit tangent vector, that's capital T, um, with respect to S, and take its derivative, and then take its magnitude. The magnitude of the rate of change of the unit tangent vector with respect to the arc length parameter is what curvature is. Let's see it in action from definition. So um, we previously had a, a curve R of T, which was uh, three sine T, four T, and three cosine T. We're able to, in the previous video, we were able to solve for S in terms of T and realize that, or sorry, T in terms of S, we can rip out all the T's and put in this S over five. And this is our reparameterized function where instead of having the input be time, the input is distance traveled. We can calculate curvature from this function. We take the derivative in the effort to build the unit tangent vector. So it turns out that you get three fifths cosine of s over five, and then you get four fifths, and then you get negative three fifths sine of s over five. Something nice happens with the magnitude. Square, 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 add them all up, and you end up with the cosine squared and sine squared combining to be just basically 9 25ths. And then the middle term squared is exactly 16 25ths. Add those two guys together, it turns out that this is a unit vector. So you don't have to divide by the magnitude to turn it into a unit vector, it already is a unit vector. So capital T of S, which normally would be velocity divided by speed, speed is one, so it's just velocity. Now we take a derivative of this because curvature is the rate of change of this vector. So we need a derivative of this. Okay, great. So negative 3 25th sine of s over 5, nothing for the middle component, negative 3 25th cosine of s over 5. This guy's magnitude is the curvature of the function at any time t. Okay, square, 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 add them all up. You'll have 9 over 625 underneath the square root, so 3 25ths is the curvature. Think about the curve. It's a, it's, a, um, it's a helix where every point on the curve should have the same bend to it, the same curvature. And so that's, that's the calculation. It's manageable for the helix, but we're going to run into trouble with most other functions. And uh, what we really did was we took a second derivative, honestly. And so the definition for curvature can be recast to be basically the second derivative with respect to arc length's magnitude. Still, it's gonna be a mess in general. Let's look at one of the other functions that we calculated arc length for. Um, this was, I think it's, this might be called a twisted cubic. I'm not exactly sure the name of it. This is the function R of T its magnitude turned out to be 3t squared plus 2. Now we need the arc length, our, our goal is to try to reparameterize, right? Have t be ripped out and put s in its place, a formula on s. And s is the arc length parameter function. And so we rip out the t's, we put in u's, dummy variable, we integrate, a is any starting point, here a is 1 for us. And we get u cubed plus 2u. We have to put the t in and we have to put the 1 in. We end up with t cubed plus 2t minus 3. 
That's what S equals. The purpose in doing this is to get T equals in terms of S. But we need to be able to invert the function. We can't. You can't solve that for T. If the other term wasn't there, perhaps, if you didn't have two of these T terms, perhaps you could definitely untangle that and be able to solve for T if you had the cubic term and not the, not the linear term. So with this particular curve, you can't reparameterize. It's not always possible. What we need is a formula for curvature that doesn't involve doing all of this. I want to be able to calculate curve. This, this, this particular function has something that I can measure. No matter where I'm at on the curve, it has a bend to it. I want to be able to measure that, and I can't from the definition. I need another formula. And so we're going to launch into about three or four slides in order to get to a formula for curvature that only involves time. All right, so bear with me. Um, you can skip through it if you like. Uh, but in the end, we're going to get a formula involving velocity and acceleration. And that's your go-to formula for curvature, not this definition, not reparameterizing, not arc length function. No, it shouldn't be that because it doesn't always work. Okay, what we need is curvature in terms of t. All right, so what are we going to do? Well, this is the definition of curvature, the derivative with respect to s of your unit tangent vector's magn magn the magnitude of that. We're going to introduce time into the mix. Numerator, denominator, we're going to take and put a dt. Basically, multiply top and bottom by the reciprocal of dt, 1 over dt. Why do that? Well, we're introducing time into the mix, and we got to get S out of the mix. Okay. Remember what S is. S is the integral from some dummy variable uh, over some dummy variable U uh, from some constant A to T. Take a close look at that denominator. That denominator is the T derivative of the S function. But the S function is an integral. So the t derivative of an integral function in t, they undo each other. And you just get the inside out with the, with the dummy variable replaced with t. You learn that in first semester calculus, that is the fundamental theorem of calculus that allows you to be able to do that. Your denominator is the magnitude of r prime of t. We know what that is. That's called speed. Change of position over change of time. It's speed. So, um, numerator is the unit tangent vector's derivative with respect to time. Magnitude of that. Okay. This is a formula in terms of t. And it's okay. We're going to find some flaws in it too, though. But let's go ahead for the helix. The one we got 3 over 25 for. Let's see it in action. No need to reparameterize. Go back to the original version. Find the unit tangent vector's derivative. Take its magnitude and divide by speed. So um, we, we, we found this guy's uh, velocity. We found the magnitude of velocity, the speed. Um, to make the unit tangent vector, we divide velocity by magnitude. So divide every component by 5. This is your unit tangent vector. This guy's derivative is your numerator, or part of your numerator, um, the magnitude of this guy's derivative. So, so right now, we take a magnitude, and then we'll have the numerator to curvature, which would be, in this case, 3 fifths. Denominator to curvature is speed, which is 5. So we take 3 fifths, divide by 5, we get the same value, 3 over 25. It's reasonable for the helix, okay? It's unreasonable for other functions. We need a better formula. Let's go ahead and stop here. I don't want this video to go too long. We want to develop another formula. You finding unit tangent vectors, derivative, and its magnitude is problematic with most functions. Maybe we'll start the next video with a the, with the function that you just find yourself in major trouble trying to do that for it. All right, thank you. My name is Nakaya Rimmer. Thank you for watching. Please comment down below, like, and subscribe. If you have any questions, reach out to me. I will see you in the next video.